Have you ever been in a public place and noticed couples in the, in the crowd? You might see couples who are holding hands and looking at each other. You might see couples that are arguing. Some of the couples are just walking side by side like they've known each other and they're best friends for many years. There are a lot of different stages in marriages and couples can look like a lot of different things. Today we're talking about the stages of marriage in this life. This week I saw something really interesting at, the, at a restaurant. There were these two elderly people sitting there not saying a word. And so Gordon and I thought, well, you know, does it come to that where you get to this place where you don't have anything to say? And then all of a sudden, they both burst out laughing. And we realized that they had both seen something, were trying not to laugh, and then both just started laughing. So it was actually the opposite. It wasn't they were so tired of each other, it's that they were getting what they the were other so one, attuned. they were so in tune, oh, look at they that. were communicating about some other thing that they had seen and it was really cute. Sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things I saw this week um, dealing with this relationships, I noticed taking our son to soccer that uh, there was a gentleman who was carrying his child and I watched his wife was in front of him and she was carrying a bag and um, some other paraphernalia for the game. But it was just interesting to see the whole family just going yeah. out to the game. It wasn't just the mom. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't just the dad. The it was all outing. of it. It was a family mm -hmm. outing. And they came with little banners for their daughter who was Aww. on the team <laughs> and, the, and the whole night. And they just, you know, just spent the day together. Yeah. And it was just really nice very to see cute. that. It was. Mm -hmm. it was. This, I had the privilege of seeing a, a very dear person to me get married. And this, this oh, new couple... Right. Just, they were just all eyes for each other. They couldn't, it was like they were in a little tube looking yes. at each other and they couldn't see anybody else and they kept touching each other's face Aww. and kissing and making cute little expressions. And it was the, the, the most darling thing. And it just reminded me of how so many relationships start off in such a sweet place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Well, today we're looking at From Romance to Real Love and I have a case I want to share with you ladies. Now I want you to Pay close attention. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? Thomas and Kelsey have been married for 20 years and say that they have never had a fight. The end. And That's it? <laughs> That's it. That's the case? That's the case. Shall I repeat it? <laughs> so they've never had a fight. They've never they say, had a fight. Well, what's a fight? I mean, did they, is that, are we talking about a fist fight? Are we talking, I hope... Not well, they've fight. never... Okay, they... this is just scary. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is scary. It always amuses me when a couple says, we have never, never had, a, had a fight. Well, don't you think there are some couples that have never had fights? Well, what... Oh, no. Mm. You think every couple has a fight? Oh, in, if, if not outward, just internally. Internal. Sure, there are disagreements. There are disagreements. But they may not call it a fight. Fight, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure, maybe it's the wording. Wording, yeah. I think when people think of fight, they think of fist dragged fight. out, fist mm -hmm. fight, yelling, top of, you know, lungs, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes I've heard this statement, we have never had a fight. It means, it's not about fist fighting. They mean, we have such a good marriage, we have never disagreed. Don't you think it sometimes means that? That's even scarier to me. I know, but that's what they think. Think, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was going to say some, some people that I've seen, when they've been married a long, long time, they get selective memory. <laughs> and they look back and they say, well, you know, we've disagreed on things, but we've never had a real knockdown, drag, drag out fight, right. and we've always been great for each other. And I mean, I know a lot of older couples that when they look back they'll say these stunning things about their marriage and you think well that's not how I remember, remember it. That's right. you know I saw something really different mm -hmm. so that's one of the things I'm wondering when I oh, hear a statement like this mm -hmm. maybe they're, they've looked back and they think well you know given what we've weathered and given our whole relationship it's been pretty good we really haven't had any yeah. fights when you compare us to other people mm -hmm. yeah. the fight the word fight is a strong term it is a strong term mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well you know before we even go any further how about we look at the stages of a marriage because there are actually stages that marriages go through so according to michelle weiner davis who was a um, an author and a uh, does a lot of work on marriages and mm -hmm. helping people not to get 
divorced. Mm -hmm. um, she says there are five stages, and stage one is where passion prevails. That's where... Oh, yes. oh that's your... Um, that's where limerence prevails. That's yeah, right, yeah. and that's where everyone is passionate, and you just yes. can't believe you're so fortunate to have met this person who euphoric. understands you. It's very euphoric. Yeah. And stage two, uh, this stage is the what was I thinking stage. <laughs> And this is where reality sets in. What have I done? What, what have, have I, I done? done? Who is this, Who person? Is this, this is? person? And that's when the little things start to get on your nerves. All the things that were really cute that first year, now Annoying. they're working your nerves. Uh -huh. Stage three, everything would be great if you changed. And this is the stage where it's, you, you say there are two ways to everything. Actually, three ways. Your spouse's way and your way. And your way is also known as the right the way. The right way. Because you know what's the right thing to do. And then stage four, that's just the way she or he is. And this is in this part of the marriage where you just finally come to terms with the person that you're married to. This is who they are, and this is who I am. And you have to figure out how to live more peaceably. And then the final stage, the last stage, stage five, is together at last. And this is the space where, the stage where the couple have shared history. They have weathered mm. time together. They've gone through experiences together. They're a team. And they're a team. It's them against the world. Mm -hmm. They feel very secure mm -hmm. about each other, and they begin to appreciate each other. Mm -hmm. And usually at this stage, your children are older, they've gone through the whole, you know, early morning feedings, mm -hmm. teenage years, <laughs> mm -hmm. even college, and now they're looking towards spending the rest of their lives together. So those are the five stages. Interesting. So well, that explains why the little couple that I just saw married, yes. they were in the limerent stage, they were so excited and everything was so ideal everything. and precious and remarkable yes. about their partner. It's really a sweet time. Well, you look at the stages and really there's one and five are fun, two, three, and four. four. <laughs> we would. That's where the work. Would be. It's a bit of a struggle. It's it a is struggle. a bit of a struggle. You know, I have, uh, there's a British study that was done that says that they looked at couples over a 20 year period and they found that there's a decline in marital satisfaction that comes 18 months after the wedding. Hmm. 18 months. 18 months after the wedding. Now, did they say why or mm. what that is? No, they didn't. I just pulled that. Hmm. That's one of the facts I pulled. And yet in the U.S., they're saying that most marital splits occur in the first five years and that couples married for about three years are especially vulnerable. Hmm. And I've been running into couples who, in the it's three years, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and they're no longer together. They're just like, we're done. Eric, I look in distant differences and we're just going to move hmm, on. Hmm. So they're not even making it. I've seen a lot of that too actually and you know what I'm thinking of is that, that the literature says that this limerence which is this real exciting feeling, the romantic feeling, wears off about 18 months, mm -hmm. between 6 and 18 months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that is part of it, the idealism is gone and now it's just me and my dirty socks. <laughs> you know? And the toilet seat that's and left up. And the toilet up. seat that's left up. Sorry, I got stuck on the so, toilet seats and the dirty <laughs> socks. Well, but you know, that's where, that's where you realize that the marriage is just like, it's not that well, special, exciting. I mean, there's some good features to it, certainly, right. but it's not that idealistic happily ever after because there are little bumps in the road you've it's not started to see. It's not the soap opera. That's well, it. It is not the soap opera. Now, opera. there it is. You know, a recent study was done the last few years about how romantic comedies actually hurt mm -hmm, relationships mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for those who watch them. And I can see that because mm -hmm. if your expectation that th is one thing and you encounter another, that is hard to deal with that difference. Well, if you look at how marriage is portrayed in the media, it's almost always in that limerence phase or they're at odds. But I mean, you don't see a lot of... When you're saying limerence, you're that exciting, passionate... That that passionate, yeah. romantic... You know, I'm going to bring her f flowers or, you know, he's going to get up and make me breakfast and that kind of thing. And that, while, while there are couples that, that, that just carries right out over the years, it's, it's not all. Right. Because it doesn't usually portray the going to work, the dealing with the challenges at work, the coming home, you know, the children have come and how that changes the whole relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, who's going to get up to go check on the baby mm -hmm. or even the dog? Who's going to walk the mm -hmm. dog tonight? Mm -hmm. You know, all those different pieces, the in-laws, the family, mm -hmm. the extended family, the expectations. Mm -hmm. They don't really do a really good job of showing the, us that over long periods of time. Or, or if they do show that, it's in a real deficit way. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I've got to get up and feed the kids. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think so. And then there's a big fight. So, uh, you know, long-term marriages are not portrayed well at all on the no. media. Mm -hmm. I just want to go back to <coughs> stage one just for a second. 
Because well, I've been asked this question a lot. There are some people that don't have that sort of passion and that feeling of being in love, and they wonder, should they get married without it? What would you say? Well, you, again, what defines this passion and feeling in love? You know, what makes you want to be with this person? Why do you want to, do you, do you long to hear them, to hear well, their voice Let's say they don't talk? have it. They, they feel this is their best friend, but they don't, they can't quite bring themselves to say they're in love. They love them, but they're not in love. Well, I don't know how to answer that one. Well, I think there's some, there can be some cultural issues there, and sure. certainly with arranged marriages and marriages where the children are told to obey what the parents suggest, I can mm -hmm. see that, you know, there might not be a lot of alternative except to follow those parental injunctions, but I would have reason to pause if I didn't feel in love with someone. It's kind of like writing a dissertation. You don't write a dissertation about something you don't have passion about because it's not going to get done. And I, I think... I the reason I hesitated was this idea of what is passion, because if I'm thinking of passion based on what I see on television, you know, it's this knocking on the window, it's, you know, singing on top of your lungs mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and doing crazy things in public <clears throat> places, that that's passion, while there is passion with being someone that's your best friend. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it, th there is passion there. There's this sense of longing and yearning and desire. It may not look like what we've been taught or read in magazines or read in, read in books, that that's passion, mm -hmm. but passion, mm -hmm is, as you said, if you're going to write about something, it's because you care about it. If you are willing to commit to someone and be with them for the rest of your life, it's because you care. There's a deep caring that's there. I also think that there are a couple facets of that, of a relationship when it starts. One might be passion, um, certainly a sensual desire for the other person, but it's not all that because you have to say, do I like the person, but do I like the life I'm going to have yes. with that person? Yes. And some people like the life they're going to have and they don't have the passion. Well, that's what we call gold diggers. I'm going to mm. take a stand here. I, don't, I would not encourage people to marry if they couldn't say or feel in love. I think it's dangerous. Okay. <laughs> well, I thought I just established that, but say more about that. No, uh, the reason I would say that is because the feeling of in love goes away anyway, but the memory of having felt mm. in love doesn't. Mm. And if couples don't have that mm. memory to go back to, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to recapture. That's a really good point. I, I think some of it might also be due to personality. Some people yeah. are nuts and bolts people and yeah. practical Utilitarian people, one of my friends said I chose a wife like I would choose a cow, mm -hmm. which I didn't like that imagery, but I, I liked the idea that he was thinking yeah. logically about who's going to mm -hmm. wear well over time. Yeah. It might not be a flash in the pan kind of mm -hmm. relationship, but who's going to wear well over time? Who do I want to have a family with? Whose values are most consistent with mine? And, um, well, what do you do with the people who feel in love all the time? They feel in love now, and then they feel out of love, and then next week they feel in love again. I think some people's personalities are prone to be that way, though. Yes. They have very fanciful thinkers, and they, you know, they have to have a lot of heightened feeling. Otherwise, right. they discount what their experience is. I certainly wouldn't suggest that you marry every person you feel in love with. <laughs> <laughs> I was simply suggesting not to marry one who you, you didn't. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. What about stage two? That what was I thinking? You know, what I hear a lot is a, a man or a woman says they look over at the s sleeping head on the pillow and say. <laughs> Who is what this? have I done? Mm -hmm. well, what is that? What is that? What have I done? What was I thinking? I think it's when the, rea the reality, Michelle Warner Davis says, the reality sets in of who is this person that you are, you've said yes to. And I think sometimes when you're in love, you don't look at the person and pay attention to the cues that will tell you who this person really is. Mm -hmm. You know, and saying that, yes, they do leave their socks. They have always left their socks on the floor. They've always left their clothes. You know, had you been paying attention when you were going to visit, you'd have noticed that it was there. But now the fact that you're picking up the socks or you're tripping over the socks or you're seeing the socks or the toothpaste gets squeezed or, you know, the, the toilet seat, you know, that's left up and the toilet paper being put the wrong way and all the little things <laughs> that you just kind of go, 
who are you? Didn't your mother teach you how to do that? You know, you don't clear the table before you get up from the table. You don't do the dishes because it hurts your back because the sink isn't right, you know, and on and on and on. <laughs> you know, you don't do laundry and you're just kind of like, I'm not a maid. It, it's a sense of, right, right. this person is the person that I'm spending the rest of my life with. Right. Who so are you? Fear. It's, it's partly fear, it's isn't partly it? It's partly fear. When you, when you look at that person and you say, oh my goodness, I can't get out of this. If I wanted to, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. They're here. <laughs> well, you know, when you're thinking about that first stage of marriage, you're trying to, both are trying to put their best, best foot forward, forward. Mm -hmm. and you're not thinking about, like you said, some of these other things, and so you don't start negotiating the hard things from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's only when you stop saying, oh, yes, dear, yeah. oh, I'd love to, and then when you really start to push, like, and, no. and I really don't feel like that. That's right. And like this it. is the part that a lot of people don't talk about, and certainly mm -hmm. isn't in a lot of romantic comedies, the, the stage of reality, yes. that this person isn't perfect, you're not perfect, you don't have perfect disagreements, you know, you're flawed, you're terribly mm -hmm. flawed. And the things that you used to like about that person can be the very <gasps> same the very things same things. that will make you want to run to the yeah. mountains. You know, <laughs> you, you, you know, I love the fact that you're, example, the yes and the no, I'm a yes, my husband's a no really like it till I get too many no's, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're a bullion and you're outgoing, but we're still here, but everybody's you're left. Crazy. You yes. know, why are we still here in the parking lot? Everybody's gone home, why are you still talking? Because you loved it though, right. you know, and it's a sense <laughs> yeah. of yeah. And we do reality. marry somebody who's different than we are a lot of times just to fill in what we feel we can't produce. Especially if we marry young. Yes, People who marry yes. older mm -hmm. won't do that as much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can't take the change. <laughs> <laughs> they do that in their ways. You know, it's interesting to me that in stage, th stage three comes later. Everything would be great if you changed. You would think that that would be first stage. You know, that happens mm -hmm. pretty early mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering why it takes place after. What was I thinking? Partly because now you've seen the person for who they are. And I think there's a, well, you may want to fix the other person. This is, I know what's best for you if you would just do these things. Because now I've studied you. I've, I've come to see you as you really are. And now I know it's because of the way you were raised. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and if your mother just taught you right, That's right, or if you just had these experiences as a kid, you would get this. You would, this wouldn't even be an issue. I think it's a grief, too. I think it runs really deep. Because mm. all your life, you were hoping for this. And then slowly you begin to realize that you have this. Mm. And it's a terrible grief that, that you may be without that, whatever that is, for the rest of yeah. your married life. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe because we can't stand that grief, we want to change. We want to somehow get it back here so it'll meet that, that dream. Mm -hmm. Not just fantasy. It's mm -hmm. a dream, isn't it? A dream that we develop mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. That actually reminds me of someone that said to me just this last week, do we always marry our parents? Do we mm. always marry someone just like our parents? And because she said, I don't want to marry someone like my father, but I ended up doing that. And when you're mm. talking about grief, Carla, I'm thinking about what her face said. It's like, oh dear, mm -hmm. I, I thought I would escape this relationship that mm -hmm. was so tough for me and now mm -hmm. I've recreated it and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do I do? And if he would just be right. different, if he would go to therapy, if he would fix this, then mm -hmm. my marriage would be okay. Wow, wow. How great the next stage is, though. That's just the way she is or he is. It's a wonderful mm. place of acceptance, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. How do you think you get there? <laughs> Most people don't. Most people don't. <laughs> they don't. Most people they don't. don't. I think no. it's a self-awareness. It's a sense of knowing who you are. You know, you get to know yourself because it's easy to always see the other person and the issues with the other person. And it's that stage, if you make it, you're able to plow through those other two stages you get here, you start asking yourselves the hard mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. You know, is it really them? Mm -hmm. You know, what do I do mm -hmm. to contribute to this challenges yeah. that we're facing right now? Because it's easy to blame his mother. Yeah. It's easy to blame his sister and his upbringing. And well, and not and just accept the person, the other person, but to actually help preserve who they are, yes. the difference. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, because preserving that difference preserves them. Mm -hmm. You know, helps their. Right. That's tough. It is. It is. And you know, she's um, Michelle Warner, Dave, Wiener, Wiener Davis. Davis says that most couples don't even make it to stage five. Mm -hmm. They don't survive mm -hmm. the other three stages to get to that place where it's just, ah, oh, we're here. You know what, one of the things that I think might trip people over the edge into this uh, stage four is where they realize suddenly that they're not God's gift to humanity too. <laughs> and that when they see themselves for who they are and how they are and 
warts and all, mm -hmm. and their failings, and they're unmasked, so to speak, in front of their partner, then it becomes very humbling, and they think, oh, maybe I shouldn't pick so much because I'm not perfect either. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I just, uh, a, a, a story came to mind once when I had put on a mask, you know those clay masks? Mm -hmm. And I forgot that I had it on. Mm. And I went to talk about something very serious with the person that was with me. And forgetting <laughs> that the clay mask was on, it was so hard to take me serious. Mm -hmm. But in stage four, people take each other seriously. Mm -hmm. They hear what mm -hmm. they're saying, even though the mask has been there. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that they agree on everything, right. but that they somehow negotiate around that. Right. Mm -hmm. And the last one, together at last, it has mm -hmm. such a... Sense of finality. A sense of finality and sense of comfort. accomplishment. Well, let's, let's go to the email questions. Um, what, mar what makes marriages last? through all the stages. What, how, does it, how do we make it last through all five stages that we've just talked about? It's probably not passion. <laughs> <laughs> it must be a combination of things. I'm, I'm thinking it might be commitment, mm -hmm. um, liking the person. I mean, you can love a person, mm -hmm. or maybe, maybe it's loving the person all the time, all the time. but mm -hmm. maybe you don't like them all the time, mm -hmm. but you love them a lot. And would you also say choosing to do so? You know, which is, a, I guess, part of the commitment, saying, I'm mm -hmm. going to choose, you know, to be with you. Mm -hmm. You know, high, low, good, bad, which is part of the vows that we take when we make marriage. Mm -hmm. But it's something else to live it out every day, to say, today, I choose to love you. Mm -hmm. I choose to be with you today. Mm -hmm. And you're I think not it's caught. A, I'm, you're you're not caught. I'm making mm -hmm. a choice that this is who I want. You're who I want to be with. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a, it's a daily choosing. And I would say being willing to say, I'm wrong, mm -hmm. many, many times a day. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. A forgiving attitude. Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe also recognizing that if you jump out of this and go to another ship, Oof. you're going to start this all over again. Right. I think people forget that. They think, oh, if I can just get to a different relationship, everything's going to be great. Yes. It's going to be back to that person. limerence that feels so That's good right. and that passion mm -hmm. phase. Mm -hmm. But really, you're going to get right back to this in I another think relationship. Jonathan Kozel, I think, is credited for this statement. The grass looks green on the other side, but nobody told you it was growing over a sewer pit. <laughs> Dear, yeah. so it, it yeah. just it looks great, but when yeah, you get over does. there, you realize, yeah. ooh, you fall in. It, well, sure, people aren't going to show you their their bad parts. Right. All right. Are there any guarantees that the marriage will last if you do the right things? Mm. I've heard that question a lot of times. Angry couples, mm -hmm. you know, we did everything right. We thought we took our time. We did all these things. I don't know why. Mm. Uh, mm. No, there are no there guarantees. Are no guarantees. Hmm. Why is it that when you go into a restaurant, here we go, this is what oh, we're talking yes. about, all the older couples who have been married for a while sit there and don't talk to each other. Will I look that bored with my partner when I've been married <laughs> that long? <laughs> well, the assumption is that they're bored because mm -hmm. we're on the outside looking in mm -hmm. and it seems that they're bored because we don't even, we don't, we, we don't have the vision to see that there's more. Mm -hmm. This is you were saying with that couple mm -hmm. that you were mm -hmm. observing. Maybe they were just so comfortable That's or right. attuned to each mm -hmm. other. Okay. And who says you have to be talking? Or touching That's all true. the time. But some of the face, facial expressions give it away. They look really grouchy and like looking off, not, not really attuning to each other. Mm -hmm. No, but don't you think that many couples are bored? I mean, that I is do. the bottom I line. Do oh, think so. I do too. They're very bored with each other. Really? I do think oh. so. You mean, well, I was just thinking in, in some of the, looking at some of the materials, because we have had, we, my husband and I were married at least 10 years before we started our family. So mm -hmm. for us, there are some stages we're going through now yes. that we, where we have young children in our marriage where others might have, who are at 15, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, almost 15 mm -hmm, years of marriage, mm -hmm. their children are older and they're moving mm -hmm, on. So it's mm -hmm. like bored? I don't have time to be bored right now. <laughs> <laughs> Chasing around these, you know, these little children. So right. I guess it, it also, yeah. where they are in their ch child rearing sure. years and so on. No, but you just brought that. up an interesting thing that part of what maybe keeps couples doing well and growing is doing something different together mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know that helps bringing uh, something new into something the relationship mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is normal for the early stage of relationships some people look so happy and they say the f their first year of marriage was their best others say it was the worst what makes the difference wow I, I wonder if it's the expectations that people That's have. Were you going to say that? Yeah. As they come into marriage, and some people are very starry-eyed, and they think we're going to be just alike, and it's going to be heaven ever after. And other people think um, this is going to be real easy to do. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And they just, they, they're surprised that when you love someone, you don't necessarily like them all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Or, and I think even those who have lived together before they get married are surprised that mm -hmm. the actual marriage commitment is different. It is. In fact, it is can it? change the whole quality of the, the relationship. Whole, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say you should marry your best friend and that this will help you through later stages of marriage. Is this true? Hmm. Well, I think love is a choice. So if you're choosing to marry someone that you're good friends with, I think it does make a difference. In, in, the, in the quality of the relationship over time. Um, it's someone that you know. You've spent some time getting to know them. So mm -hmm. it's not this sense of untried territory, mm -hmm. but you're aware of who they are, your understanding mm -hmm. of their backgrounds, and, mm -hmm. and, and you're willing to go the journey with them. This mm -hmm. is the person you would do the journey with. That you enjoy hanging out that with. That you like. That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. what, yeah. 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 Do we have time for one more? One mm -hmm. more. Marriage is difficult. What helps most during the difficult times? Well, I'm thinking of the times when there are a lot of small children or teenagers in the house when that's, that takes a toll on a relationship. I think community helps. If you have a community of people who can help you take turns with watching the children um, so that you can have date nights. My, my BFF I was talking about before, she said as soon as our son could sleep through the night, she said, give him to me and you and your husband go away. How nice. Mm -hmm. And that was the best gift, mm -hmm. you know. We took a while before we took her up on it, mm -hmm. but it was just the idea that there was someone who understood what mm -hmm. we were going mm -hmm. through and was yeah. willing to help us out. And I would say don't wait till the difficult times mm. to strengthen the marriage. That's you know, right. so often couples wait until they're in trouble and then they want to go to counseling or and then they want to get help from the community and that's a that's a difficult time to do it. And then they say, well therapy didn't work. Didn't work. Mm -hmm. That therapist work. is no good. Is no good. <laughs> right, right. And exactly. there's a lot of literature out there. There's lots a lot of literature, of help, self videos, self-help mm -hmm. things that you can look at and do it with other couples, you know, just to help you both. Mm -hmm. uh, but how many together. couples do you know who say, let's just go to therapy for a checkup. For a check, just because. <laughs> for a tune-up. <laughs> for a tune-up. How many, who does that? Well, not, not nearly enough, I don't not think. Not nearly think enough. So. That's right. Well, this has certainly been a great topic to talk about today from mm -hmm. romance to real love. And we just want to thank you all for joining us for this episode of This Life. If you have any questions or comments, we want you to go to info at LLBN.TV. And we hope you were blessed and we enjoyed being with you today. Thank you.